Our next story is brought to you by NordVPN. Help secure your web traffic and protect you from snoops, spies, and anyone else from stealing or monetizing your data. All for 75% off at nordvpn.com slash TYT. Use the code TYT and get a free month now. Former acting ICE director Thomas Homan testified before the House Oversight Committee in regard to Donald Trump's zero tolerance policy, which took children away from their parents at the border as they were seeking asylum. And he also commented on the unsanitary and squalid conditions that migrants are being kept in in these detention facilities. Now, things got heated when Representative Connolly called him out in regard to how these individuals are treated. Take a look. I've sat here and listened to horror stories. I thought it was fiction. I thought it was a novel reading from Charles Dickens and the conditions that prevailed 19th century London. Children without soap, children in filth, conditions that none of us would ever countenance with our own children. So that upset Homan. Quite a bit. Uh, he went on his little press tour following this hearing, and he uh, commented commented specifically on what Connolly had to say. How many lives have been saved by Border Patrol agents, sir? Just this past year, they saved over 4,000 lives, but no one wanted to talk about that today. I was the only one want to talk about it. And yes, I was insulted by him and many others. Representative uh, Gerald Connolly from Virginia, you know, he threw out dirt. And, and wouldn't let me respond to this about political theater. He ran out of there like a little girl. He's a coward. And he didn't want to hear my response because this was all political theater. Ran out like a little girl. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. I mean, this is what politics has devolved into. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's school yard bully nonsense, like nonstop. I mean, you want to talk about how many people have been saved? I don't know where that 4,000 number comes from. They don't elaborate on that. But 24 people have died in US custody, 24. And it's because of these insane conditions they're kept in. In my no filter segment today, I talked specifically about how Trump, there is a crisis at the border. I think it is legitimate and we should call it what it is. But Trump has exacerbated that crisis. He hasn't made it better, he's made it far worse. He's done it by pulling foreign aid away from countries that could certainly use it to improve the conditions so migrants don't want to leave. That includes El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras. He is so punitive toward undocumented immigrants that individuals who would previously sponsor unaccompanied minors are not coming forward to sponsor them. I mean, this problem has become so much worse because of Trump's ignorant policies and his punitive nature, but they want to stand there and pretend as if he's handling this perfectly. No, he's he's been terrible at this. Oh, absolutely. And and you know, for for someone who represents the immigration authorities in this country, uh, to to I mean, that's like something nice compared to what uh, we saw in the, the the Facebook message boards from mm -hmm. the Customs and Border Patrol folks. So we know what they really think and believe, uh, both about uh, members of Congress who criticize them and also the the migrants themselves that they're charged with, uh, you know, overseeing. At the border, um, yeah, this is a Trump-created crisis. Absolutely, uh, in my view. Mm -hmm. And and by the way, I also want to just remind you of Ken Klippenstein's reporting and and how he spoke to a Border Patrol official who spoke on the condition of anonymity, and this person drew attention to all the various things that could be done to improve the conditions of these migrants, and they're not actually following through with these things because they don't care. There's well, a carelessness. It's actually quite deliberate, right? I mean, yeah, the cruelty absolutely. is the point. Exactly, yeah. Uh, as Adam Serwer mm -hmm. uh, has, has said many, many times, uh, the, the idea is to inflict inhumanity upon these people in this ridiculous kind of notion that that would stop the flow of migrants from the border. But uh, as Representative Omar said over the weekend, it's like, you know, uh, if a shark keeps coming into this, it's because that shark is leaving something behind that's far worse. Mm -hmm. uh, so obviously, it almost proves the point that, that there is a legitimate asylum claim here. If these migrants will come to this misery and think that it's a better situation than mm -hmm. what they're leaving behind. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. No. Yeah, and it just really, I don't know, it really speaks to me that what they're doing to this migrant community in terms of 
housing them in these poor conditions and making so much money that they're filling their coffers with is what they've done to the black community in terms of prisons and the privatization mm -hmm. of them. And so they're really just continuing to leverage that and take advantage of that, especially because we've seen a lot of laws change recently, like Florida giving um, a lot of people, uh, well, it's actually people who were in prison the right to vote. And essentially, when there's less disenfranchisement and those private prisons can't make their money, you you need the corporations to continue to make some money somehow, and they are really doing that by abusing the migrant community. And I've that's heard a big this. problem. I've heard this from from Representative Talib and, and and other people that you know in the African American community, you almost is, this is this is seen as intertwined, yes, right? Sir. This is like a dry run mm -hmm. for the militarization of other communities of color, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, is that is that what you're hearing? And oh, what you're seeing? Um, that's that's what I observe, and that's mm -hmm. exactly what I see this as. Um, there's so much here that's analogous to what's been done to black communities for centuries, essentially. And they're just really, we need more people to step up and to speak out because we are finally recognizing that this isn't okay in terms of what happened with the black community. And we see that with these great Netflix documentaries and people speaking out and rising up and making change. But then now it's happening to the migrant community and we have to stop it. Just because it's no longer necessarily fully impacting just us is not okay. Because yeah. it can't happen to anybody. Yeah, and, and I, I just want to quickly note that uh, Republican lawmakers in the state of Florida are trying to yeah. do away with what voters voted in favor of in right. giving these, uh, you know, uh, previous inmates uh, the opportunity to vote now that they're mm -hmm. out of prison. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll update you on that story uh, in a more detailed video later. But I also want to note, you know, you mentioned the profit motive, and and I've talked about this before. I know David, you've done really great reporting about the private prison industry and how it's profiting mm -hmm. off of Trump's immigration policies and all these detention facilities. Again, Geo Group has made five hundred hundred million dollars since Trump implemented the zero tolerance policy. They are getting, and by the way, that $500 million, that's in government contracts, that's our money. US taxpayers are funding the brutal behavior that we're seeing at these detention facilities. Now, uh, there was one other uh, lawmaker who called uh, Homan out and, and was not holding back in terms of calling him racist. Representative Jesus Garcia from Illinois accused Homan of being racist and not caring about dying children. And here's how Homan responded to that. Did you catch this? Retired ICE Director Tom Homan attacked by members of Congress on Capitol Hill. Tom, have you calmed down yet from that hearing? Uh, I did until you just showed that clip uh, <laughs> of someone calling me a racist. and said I didn't care about dying children. That's, uh, that's when I broke. That's when I, if you notice, I hesitated a minute before I started yelling because I actually think about getting up and throwing that man a beating right there in the middle of the room. Great, so let's talk about uh, using physical violence because you don't like uh, the truth about who you are. By the way, back in 2017, Holman admitted to reporters that uh, migrants do not commit more crime than US citizens. Okay. And it's incredible to see how in such a short period of time under this administration, people become more and more radicalized in their right wing ideology. Because they're given permission yes. to right. do so, it's a tone at the top. And it's wild because it's just ignorant. Like you don't even have facts to support it. And yet these people cling to it and are willing to sacrifice human lives and then say that, no, I care about humanity. No, I care about children, really? Well, hey, you made it this far. You must really like the Young Turks. Thank you. We really appreciate you. Now, another easy way to keep supporting us also helps keep your internet activities and data private, all with a push of the NordVPN app. Head to nordvpn.com/tyt right now for 75% off of your next three years.